Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hi, guys. Uh, let's get it started. First video of the day. First video, jitters. Um... Hi, my name's Connor. If you're new, I like to learn about things. Preemptive like. Evan Edinger. Edinger. I always forget. I'm sorry. Uh, great channel. Great videos. Basic workers' rights. British versus American. Yeah, let's find out. Let's go. The original link, top description. Discord, below that. We'd love to have you. The link is there. Just click on it. Send right over there. Growing up in the States, I had to show up to work regardless of how sick I was. I mean, unless I was absolutely dying, and even then I had to call around to find replacements, which is why I'm not really surprised about this recent CNN report saying many Americans show up to work very sick regardless of how far along Omicron is now spreading. Doesn't surprise me in the slightest. If you're from any other country and you're like, why the heck are Americans like that? Strap yourselves running in. Today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the differences between US and UK culture in regards to leaving work and work benefits. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Evan Ediger, and this is kind of what I do. I'm British American. I like making videos about these interesting differences. And well, recently, last week, I made a video about how I got my first job in the UK, and a lot of you wanted to know more about those interesting differences between working for a US company in the US versus a UK company in the UK, and also a little bit of intermingling. So that's where this video came from. Now, I wasn't joking in the intro. No matter how sick I was, when I was working at a Pizza Hut, a food service restaurant, I was expected to show up to work or find a replacement, which is something that most people in the UK, when I told them this, said, well, isn't that what the hiring manager is supposed to do? Uh, yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. He should be the one kind of balancing. Why is it down to the individual employee? Well, it's because when you're sick in the US, that is actually your fault. You're guilty of this, and you need to pay the company back by doing another job and finding someone else to replace. That's just the culture. Whereas, because I was brought up like this, my first couple jobs in the UK, I showed up incredibly ill during days in which I was sick and was told to go home, which blew my mind. What do you mean? What? I already showed up. I'm <laughs> coughing all over the place, but I, I got to have work to do, right? No, I was sent home, and I could get healthy. What? But one of the most interesting aspects of this whole thing was that I was paid for when I was sick, which was the first time I'd ever experienced that. And most Americans will tend to agree, what happens is when you are ill and you have to ask the boss for the day off because you're sick, a lot of times that comes out of holiday pay. Holiday. Holiday. You see, most UK companies have something in place for this, in the inevitable likelihood that an employee is sick. If you do get sick for longer than three days, the government actually can step in and ensure you get a little bit under 100 pounds per week plus whatever your employer agrees to give you until you get better, which is a nice little thing to fall upon. Now, in the sad circumstance you are sick for a very long time, you can go to get a doctor's note, but as we have nationalized healthcare, that doesn't cost anything. On the other hand, in the US, the land of the free, there is no federally mandated sick pay. So regardless of if you're sick for one day, one week, one month, you are unpaid for the most part which isn't really the best situation. And especially if you're someone that is living paycheck to paycheck, which as of March, 2022 is 64% of Americans, nearly two out of every three Americans is living paycheck to paycheck. I don't really think you can blame someone for going to work when they're ill, if financially they're just playing the cards that they've been dealt as best as they can. Also given the fact that a lot of American employers demand a doctor's note if you are ill for more than one or two days, which is then an entire extra day you need to take off to go to your doctor. Doctor. And if you don't have great insurance, for instance, when I um, they don't require a doctor's note or any proof over in the UK, so you can just like, I mean, there must be. I'm sure if you have a long record of, you know, oh, I'm sick, oh, I'm I'm sick, I'm sick. I'm sure they're gonna want to look into it a little bit, but yeah, this might be a bit uh, extreme. I was working at different retail restaurants and things. A well, bit. Yeah. That's 75 bucks a session. So now I've lost essentially a day or two's wages, plus I'm freaking ill still and I have to heal. It's, it's just not a good situation. You pay for the, the thing about this issue is it's really not political in the slightest. In fact, 94% of self-identified liberals and 81% of self-identified conservatives agree that paid sick days should be a basic human worker right. But then if such a huge grouping of these two sides that usually war all the time finally agree on it, why do we not have any change? Well, there's an even bigger percentage 
of corporations and employers that really don't give a shit about what you think, and well, ah. they have a lot of money and they'd like to keep it that way. And so they've successfully lobbied to ensure that no change has happened. Does that sound familiar to any other part of the US law? Almost all of it, actually. Yes, it's sad. And sadly, as is the case in most of these things, the people with the largest amount of money have the largest voice in US politics, and so can shout down the massive majority of people who just want this basic right, so that they can have more money which is of course the American dream. Now, given that this is the sad state of affairs, most Americans have found a loophole on how to have paid sick leave and sadly, you probably know where this is going. Well, it comes out of their holiday pay. One of the reasons why Americans don't travel or go on holiday as much as anyone else in Western civilization, well, they use them for sick days. Now, regardless of whether or not you get paid time off during your next trip abroad or to the local shops, today's video sponsor, Revolut, can actually help you with that. Revolut is a global financial super app used by 18 million plus people around the world for all things money. Has any, any, um, videos I watch, their content where they have sponsors that might interest you, that have links and promo codes, please, please use them. Spending, saving, investing, that's Revolut. Now in terms of spending, with a lot of different retailers out there, there are massive discounts you can get, up to 40% I'm just up, by which doing is your good. daily shop. And, and uh, there's genuinely spending, Revolut uh, has interest so many me. great budgeting tools so you can find out, oh, get back am to I work. spending too much money on takeaway this month? And possibly curb your spending there. With Revolut, you can spend abroad like a local anywhere in the world thanks to their excellent exchange rates and no hidden fees. And even better, it's so easy to send money to any Revolut user with just a single tap you can pay anyone anywhere lord just of the like rings that. is on in the That's corner Revolut. and i need and to, to make turn things down even the better Revolut is giving away a 20 pound welcome Freaking bonus to Aragorn. any of you who download the app via my link in the description so thank you very much to Revolut for sponsoring today's video go download it today and uh, where were we Ah yes, holiday pay. Now most people realize that Americans don't travel as much as many of their European counterparts. And a lot of Americans will say, well, it's because the country is so big and there's not many places to visit outside of like Mexico and Canada. But usually as soon as somebody makes this argument, Australia enters the chat. But it has more to do with the fact that there are no federal protections for holiday pay in the States at all. I don't know how many times I've told this story on this channel, but I'll tell it again. I worked Sorry. five years at a pizza uh, work in 30 times the fact because the, the country is so big as much as many of the where were we ah, sorry yes. guys holiday pay now most people realize that americans don't travel as much as many of their european counterparts and a lot of americans will say well it's because the, the country is so big and there's not many places to visit outside of like mexico and canada but usually as soon as somebody makes this argument Australia enters the chat, but it has more to do with the fact that there are no federal protections for holiday pay in the States at all. I don't know how many times I've told this story on this channel, but I'll tell it again. I worked five years at a Pizza Hut working 30 hours a week, and I earned zero days paid holiday, whereas I worked under 20 hours in London and managed to get two days a month. I was what? blown away with how I was able to earn anything, considering that I'd worked five years and hadn't even gotten a single raise from my $2.13 an hour that were paying me. Somehow, legally, they didn't have to. How was that legal though? Well, federally, there aren't any laws about holiday pay. The government thought it'd be better to just leave that up to the employers. And as we all know, employers always have the best intentions. They don't. <laughs> now my state decided to have it so that once you work over a certain amount of time, in my case, 30 hours, you are entitled to some paid holiday. However, they made it a step function, meaning you have to cross over that threshold of 30. There isn't a gradual increase, like say the way we pay taxes. And so that's just going to allow capitalistic companies to be capitalistic companies to ensure I never was allowed to work over 33 hours a week, just so they could make sure I averaged out under that and they would never ever have to pay me a single day of paid holiday. That's just what companies are going to do if you let them do that. That's the point of government, to step in and give people the basic rights that they're entitled. I had a friend that worked at Google uh, in the UK and got 30 days of paid holiday, moved to the US, and lost half of them. Because, well, 15 days, that's quite a lot in the US. Well, in the UK, we are mandated to have at least 28 days of paid holiday. That's 5.6 weeks of paid holiday, including Can I just say, holidays. Right. If an employer Can I just say this? I, I've been good, not pausing. Um, It's very interesting, but... So when it comes to uh, health care or uh, how wants to, I'll go to a more better put um, uh, sick leave, parental leave, um, maternal and paternal. I'm always like, well, there must be like some benefit, right? Like, like to, to what I, I, I'm always skeptical that that one that America just does everything to screw over the people and the workers and other countries don't. And I'm like, well, there's got to be something, but 
from what I've seen from healthcare stuff, the UK seems to have the most loved healthcare service of most countries, and uh, they, they don't have to pay as much. And so there are a lot of things in the US that I'm learning are really just, yeah, they are just to make money. Um, and it's as simple as that, it seems, which is kind of depressing. I'll, I'll, I, yeah. They can get 5.6 weeks of paid holiday, including bank holiday. You know, I'm like, surely there, you know, with all this stuff, there has to be something that the benefit is, uh, that benefits the U.S. because of these policies. But every time I'm like, maybe not. I'm still learning. If an employer wants to, that's 5.6 weeks of paid holiday, including bank holidays. If an employer wants to, they can give you more than that or less, but that's just how it is. Though, to be fair, the U.S. Department of Labor has said that 76% of private sector employees got paid holiday, and the average of that was 10. Well, as there's no federal law, employers don't have to, and so they won't unless they're forced to, which is why it's good that in certain states, they actually have. In states like Vermont, for every 52 hours you work, you get one hour of paid holiday. And for those of you that enjoy math, that means that working 40 hours a week in the state of Vermont <laughs> every hurting. single week, at the end of the year, you earn five days of paid you holiday. You have to come with me. 40 well, hours. Of course, Minister. <laughs> I'd like to let you do it on your own. <laughs> Why is Yes Prime Minister playing? <gasps> oh, sorry. It's horrible. In the state of Vermont, every single week, at the end of the year, you earn five days of paid holiday, 40 hours. That's horrible. And of those five days, if we know that the average American is sick 3.9 days of the year and they don't get paid sick days, well, of those five days in Vermont, Point you've one. got one left if you've got an average amount of sickness. Congratulations, where are you gonna go? Dorney Park? It's a bit far. And all of these things together really show how the culture is in terms of when you ask your boss for a day off in the US and they act as if, even though you're fully entitled to it, you're hurting them and you are doing them a disservice to take the holiday that you're legally allowed to have in certain states. It's just such a weird contrast to countries like Germany in which their employers force them to go on holiday because they understand that a well-rested employee is going to be a better one, make better decisions. I, I learned, and this is not a like, see, America's not bad, look at Japan, but, and like South Korea, okay, this might seem like a, me trying to be defensive for no reason, I'm not, but I heard that, uh, like, there's a similar thing in, in Japan where you, you get hours off, but nobody takes them, because, like, you're just expected to, like, so they basically have zero time off. I look like I'm like I'm scapegoating here. Sorry. And be Why am I, be, I just well rested? My American ah. employee Sorry. is going to be a better one. Make better decisions and be happier in general. I mean, the UK isn't the greatest thing, but I'm thankful that we do have those 28 days of paid holidays so that people can take off. People can enjoy their lives and not just work every single day of their lives. Now, as a quick asterisk here, there are some companies in the US and the UK that both employ this new magical thing called unlimited time off. Unlimited paid holiday. That sounds like a dream. I was offered a job like this once and that was the first thing I had a question about. I went, how does that work? Unlimited time off, I can just take off? And he was like, yeah, you, you have unlimited as opposed to like 28 days or 29, you have unlimited. So I said, so I'm just gonna get hired and then just start going on holiday. And he went, well, you do have to make sure that you you work enough, like you feel like you've gotten enough done. And I was like, sick. well, that's not unlimited then, now is it? Now, truth be told, I did go on holiday way more than any other employee, but I was a rare case. In fact, the whole concept of unlimited paid holiday, it is found means that people take off less because they don't realize how much they have. If you have 28 days and you've spent 14, by the end of the year, sometimes you wanna just make sure you spend those final days. If it's unlimited, you don't actually have an end limit. And so most people will spend less. So there it is, companies giving you something that looks like it's beautiful. It is a Trojan horse. It's actually so you take off less. Cool. What, what about a system where, so essentially I guess where it's like, like in college, for example, like the difference between uh, high school and before and college for inter is like, if you don't show up to class in high school, they're going to be like, where the hell are you? Um, what's going on? Obviously call your parents and then 
and everything. But in college, it's like your professor doesn't care. It's you're you're gonna suffer from you're gonna be the one to suffer if you skip so much. So what if you had that kind of approach to hey, your days off, you got one hundred percent days off if you want to. It's just do you get the work done or don't you get the work done? Isn't that, wouldn't that be even more cost effective than forcing people to come in every day from this hour to this hour? Um, depending on the job, the person is going to have to adjust, but I feel like it'll be a, a it'd be a more um, adult response of like, Hey, yeah, you're a worker here. This is your job. Um, See how well you can do it. If you don't do it well, I'm going to fire you and find someone else. You know, sort of like, hey, if you can do a great job in two hours a day of work, there, that's that's how much I, I want you to work. I don't care how much time you're sitting at your desk playing Minesweeper or whatever. But no, maybe. And so, and part of it, and I think he's starting to get to the antithesis here, is that I always like an antithesis because whenever I'm I'm shown a video that about a topic like this that like everything's perfect and and like wow you can really do that and then I'm like so you're telling me I can if I was in the UK or Germany or whatever and I had 24 days off and I took 24 days off and then I said and then I didn't come in for a month and just said I'm sick right for a month. Like that that's the feeling I get. It'd be like, oh, I can get two months off, three months off. But obviously that like that that don't that's so simple minded. Of course, at some point, if you are not getting your job done in a capitalistic uh again, I don't I don't use use capitalistic as a um pejorative, you know. I just I think it's it's what <laughs> what most countries run on, their economies. And uh Do you get what I mean? I feel like I don't know what I'm talking about. Just Classic let me know. Capitalism. Now, obviously, sometimes people die. Wow, we're getting real. Sorry, I'm saying that obviously company will go, wants to make money. Right. And if you are costing them money, even though you're getting your whatever uh, days off, vacation days, holiday days. Uh, that if you don't come in enough and you're hurting their bottom line, I'm sure they're going to fire you. Right. I feel like that should go without saying. And yet I'm saying it. Our capitalism. Now, obviously, sometimes people die. Wow. We're getting real dark. Bereavement really? is something I'm never dying. Really expect at the end of the day for both countries to have. But they don't. The UK does have a law, however, if you do lose a dependent, which I'm thankful does include things like housemate which the U.S. does not, but if you do lose a dependent in the U.K., the law states you're to be given a reasonable amount of time off to grieve. Reasonable. That, that's the law. You must be reasonable. And it's odd that this type of thing just works in the U.K. In the law, it says, be reasonable. In the U.S., that's not... I don't think that would ever work. As much as I don't really... Yeah, exactly. I'd be... Exactly. Uh, that, that is exactly my, my issue. Reasonable. In the U.S., that's not, I don't think that would ever work. Like people, I, I think that people don't understand. I'm being, America is a different beast. Okay. We, we are about money <laughs> and uh, it's like, like that would be like, oh, really? Oh, well, um, uh, some old lady uh, on two, two floors below me in an apartment that I'd never talked to died. I need some time off to grieve. Like that would a hundred percent happen. Or, or if uh, uh just work. As much as I don't really feel protected by a clause saying it has to be reasonable, in the UK they do kind of follow through with that most of the time. In the US though, the only thing we really have is the Family and Medical Leave Act, which allows for 12 weeks of leave protected unpaid leave which is good. You can come back to your job at the end of it and ta-da, you've still got it. However, there's so many asterisks revolving around this FMLA or My Life America Act. There's a big chance it doesn't even apply to you to get FMLA. this unpaid leave and you're going to have to work regardless of what you're going through. Do you work for a company with fewer than 50 people? Well, congratulations. You do not qualify. You have to keep working through your grief. Did one of your loved ones wait to pass away until after you got your new job? 
you're also not entitled to any leave protect- Well, they shouldn't have waited to die, okay? They should have died when they wanted to. Did unpaid leave. Nope, you've got to come to work it's grieving because you have to stay at the same company for at least a year before that can happen, which is a reason why I'm assuming most people are afraid to leave jobs because that transitionary period, there are so many benefits the government is no longer giving you. So if Breaking Bad, the guy whose daughter died and then he had to, he went into work. He didn't, he didn't have to, but he went into work and then crashed the planes. You work for a company with fewer than 50 people, or you've recently switched jobs, the FMLA just does not apply to you. And in fact, on the official website for the FMLA, it states, if you know ahead of time that you'll be taking leave for a new child or a planned medical treatment for yourself or a family member, you are required to give your employer 30 days advance notice. In the case of planned medical treatment, you must try to schedule the medical treatment when it will not unduly disrupt your employer's business. Yikes. Okay, that's a giant F you. So, next time you plan on being sick or plan on having someone die next or Tuesday. birthed or anything else, make sure it does not inconvenience your employer. That is in the US law. And so the difference here being that in the UK, employers are asked to give a reasonable time off to their employees when they're going through grief. And in the US, employees are asked to give their employer reasonable time off when the employee is going through grief. It's just a country for the haves. Let me just say one more thing. I, I, I am all for the, um, uh, I don't want to say complaining because that imp complaining implies it's, it's, it's uh, unreasonable, you know? So I, 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 the, I, I'm all for the, the pointing out of these indifferences, but that, that doesn't satisfy me. I, I, I want to know why, like why, 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 why the difference? You know, people can talk about the crazy differences all day long. Why is America so much more careless towards its citizens? And my gut is that Americans are careless towards its citizens. It's, it's, or no, more careless. I, I just think the land of the free, right, is like the land of you are free to go. It's it's implied like oh the land of the free that means everything oh my god you're it's like no you're you're free. I don't even know what I'm saying. The employees have so little protection. You have to ask for permission for one of your relatives to die. What the f and the last of the big leaves we're going to be talking about today? The big one, the elephant in the room. No offense to your mother, but maternity leave and paternity <laughs> leave. What was that segue? We've all seen. Wait, did he just call everyone's mother an elephant? No offense to your mother, but leaves we're going to be talking about today, the big one, the elephant in the room. No offense to your mother, but <laughs> maternity leave and paternity leave. What was that segue? We've all seen the map before. The he fact that the US mom. has zero days of paid maternity leave is still disgusting. No, 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 because you see Papua New Guinea doesn't have it. Uh, neither does Liberia or Sierra Leone. So what does that say? How it's not protected. How does France have paid maternity leave, but French, or is that French Guinea? Maybe that's Suriname. Okay. Uh, 52 weeks or more. Russia. Holy crap. Japan. Germany, okay. Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. Uh, none less than fourteen weeks. Unknown is Bosnia, Bhutan, and Suriname. Protected at all is disgusting. In the UK, employees can take up to fifty-two weeks of maternity leave, and their jobs are protected for when they come back. And of those 52 weeks, the first six are paid at 90% of their salary. The next 33 are paid at 90% or £156.66, whichever is smaller. And then the next weeks are actually unpaid. But of that period, you still have your job protected, you still have some money coming in, and you can take care of your child during the moments in which it needs you most. Now, when it comes to paternity leave, the UK definitely falls flat here, only providing fathers with one to two weeks of paid paternity leave. And of that, it's that £156.66 or 90% of your salary. Salary, whichever is smaller. But it 
people are going to get mad at me. I, I've never been a father, okay? I'm, I've, if I am ever going to be a father, it's not going to be for like another eight to ten years minimum, I hope. I sound really not good. It's that but I feel like, I mean, maternity leave, that'd be crazy. But getting two weeks of paternity leave, that sounds pretty good. No? 156 pounds, 66 or 90% of your salary, whichever is smaller. But it is two weeks that you're allowed to take off and you also get two prenatal appointments before the birth of your child. So if you need to take off to check on how the baby's doing in the mama's belly, you can do that. Now, when it comes to the US, do you remember that Family and Medical Leave Act we were talking about earlier? That's the only thing the US has in place for expectant mothers unpaid leave. This means as soon as employees are finished going into labor, they need to go back into the labor force because there's no other way of affording to take care of that child. There's nothing there to protect them. And with just how expensive US hospital bills can be when it comes to having a child there, it's no leave act we were talking about earlier. If they choose. Okay, that was a punch to the gut. I'm not going to lie. Ow. That makes no sense. At all. Well, just hire a nanny. Uh, how? That's your problem. Jesus, I... I thought I had to sneeze. All right, that, that was a punch to the, to the gut US, there. That's that crazy. Family and Medical Leave Act we were talking about earlier? That's the only thing the U.S. has in place for expectant mothers. Unpaid leave. This means as soon as employees are finished going into labor, they need to go back into the labor force because there's no other way of affording to take care of that child. There's nothing there to protect them. And with just how expensive U.S. hospital bills can be when it comes to having a child there, it's no surprise how many reports are coming out of mothers going back to work within a couple days after just having a child in America. So wrapping this up, sick pay, holiday pay, bereavement pay, and maternity leave are basic workers' rights that people in the UK and around the world get to enjoy whereas people in the US just don't. The only way an American worker can hope to get any of these basic workers' rights is if by chance their employer just happens to, out of the goodness of their heart, provide it, which doesn't happen very likely, which is why it's good to see that there's a large resurgence in the States of workers' unions coming back into fashion. Starbucks, what? Amazon, Apple, everyone is fed up with the fact that they're not given the rights, the government isn't protecting them, and so people are demanding they protect themselves forming unions and demanding the rights they deserve. How long did we have to put up with people clapping their hands for essential workers and now that COVID is for the most part cut and dried, we're seeing people go, oh, well, you're not that essential, no pay raise for you. What do you want to get paid more than $15 to flip a burger? Well, considering the cost of living has gone up, yes. I think they do. It is really horrible that at the end of the day in the US, we have to fight for those basic freedoms at the bottom, but that's the case when people with a lot of money don't want things to change, and I don't think they do. Genuine question, do you think within our lifetime you will see the US government step in and provide these basic rights that every other country's citizens have had for many years? I'm sure it will improve over the decades as I'm sure it has improved over the past, but, like, American-style improve, which means, like, like, you know, like, like, just there, there, you know? I'd like to be hopeful and say yes, but the way that most American politics is run by money, it's looking very doubtful. But regardless of your stance on these different types of leave, leave me a comment. Tell me what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Or if you'd like, you can watch another research video over here on my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a nice day. I am sweaty. I'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye. He seems like such a cool guy. And I'm just going to say, I love his hair color. I don't know why I've never said this before, but I feel like he has a unique hair color. It's like... It's like if blonde and brown and red 
got mixed. Am I weird for pointing that out? Whatever. I am. I oh, love this guy's channel. Love Evan. He's awesome. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. I shouldn't have. I love him. I love you guys. All right. Hope you guys are all doing well. Really, I really love to see your comments, especially on videos like these. I always like to see your comments. Hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Make sure to comment on any of the points I might have stupidly made or in the video. Okay, bye.